I'm Sarah Levon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am back to answer more of your questions from the comments section on previous videos and then from Instagram. We are going to talk about prodromal labor. We're going to talk to you second, third, fourth time moms about how long labor might take. I am going to answer questions about tearing. We talk about herpes. I answer a ton of your questions today in this April coffee and questions. But before I get started, don't forget to subscribe down below so that you never miss a video or a future shout out in one of my future coffee and questions videos and then let's get started. My mug for today says grow because we're all in a process of growing and that's what I want you to do. I want you to grow in your knowledge and your confidence and your understanding of your bodies and the process of labor and birth and so that's my truth for you today. We're not going to waste any time this time around and I'm just going to get right into it with these questions. I'm going to actually go to my last coffee and questions from March 2019. Brittany Harlan says, question in big letters, is it possible to have a c-section with an anterior placenta? Is there a higher risk of something going wrong? So Brittany, yes you can have a c-section with an anterior placenta. Your doctor is definitely going to want to know where it is on your uterus, like on the front part of the uterus. Likely the anterior placenta or the placenta is anteriorly on the upper part of the uterus and so really that shouldn't make a difference for your c-section. Emmanuel Beulieu. <laughs> I think she might be French. Sounds French. She says, P.S. Part of me hopes you will answer my question just to see how you'll pronounce my name. What's the deal with pineapple juice? I've seen hospital bag lists include it because it's supposed to help with breastfeeding. Is that really a thing? Uh, I've never heard of this before on being on a hospital list and I don't know of any particular benefit that pineapple juice helps with breastfeeding. Now pineapple juice is a great source of vitamin C, it's a great source of fiber, it's good nutrients so long as you're looking at the label and making sure it's not just a bunch of artificial sugar but like legit pineapple juice or just chunks of pineapple first of all are really delicious and second of all are a good source of fiber to keep you regular and in theory what you eat changes like the taste of the breast milk and so it might make it a little sweeter. That's totally a theory though. But otherwise, I don't know of any way that it necessarily helps with breastfeeding other than that it's really yummy and keeps you hydrated, which we also like for breastfeeding. Emmanuel, Emmanuele, Beulieu. <laughs> Robin Miller says, as an L&D nurse, what is your opinion on parents filming and blogging births? <laughs> you asked for my opinion and I'm actually gonna give it to you which normally I don't do but this one doesn't really have to do with anything medically so I feel like I can I think first of all that your birth is your birth it is monumental it's kind of like a wedding you should be able to film your wedding you should be able to film your birth in fact sometimes I'm at births and there are certain hospitals here in LA that don't allow you to take pictures even which I think is insane that I will very much strongly disclaim that I have a strong opinion that you should at least be able to have pictures of your birth but also filming I understand from the medical perspective most of the time it's because of liability everybody's worrying about CYA look that up of what that means liability is a real thing and so to have the actual birth on film if your birth were to go to court you actually have proof of what exactly happened so I get it hospitals don't like you filming their births but at the same time I just think you should have your birth on film I know I have my birth birth on film. My sister has her birth on film. By the way, my heart rate dropped for like 20 minutes and me and my friends joke that I would be so much smarter if my heart rate hadn't dropped for that long and I had what we call a prolonged B-cell. It is so fun for me to be able to watch my birth back. I think that you should talk to your doctor about it. I know for me, honestly, that would be a deciding factor for delivering with a certain doctor if they allowed me to take pictures for sure, but also a video. Heck yeah, I want my, my birth on video. As far as putting it on YouTube, I just want to put out there, I love watching other people's births on YouTube. I think it's super cool that people are sharing their experience with everybody, but I also just want to disclaim that one person's experience is their own, and it's not going to be what your birth looks like. Sorry. Not sorry. Everybody's birth is so different, so yes, learn from each other, pay attention to like what they did to help and what might work for you, but also hold your hands open because everybody's birth is so different. Kylie Todd says, can your water break with a Frank Breach baby or like baby totally booty down. Uh, yes, it can. Your water can break with no matter what position the baby is in. And so that's a great question for your provider because there are certain risks depending on what position the baby's in. Particularly what we're worried about is a cord prolapse. So that's coming on my complications of pregnancy series. Yes, the answer is your water can break with, break no matter what position your baby is in. Mrs. 
dot misses says is there anything for pain if you opt for home delivery or get stranded with only EMS availability for help uh well no like as far as pain medication options go if you opt for a home birth you are limited to natural ways of coping so breathing relaxation visualization counter pressures massage touch Position changes, uh, breathing, did I say that already? And breathing, hot, cold, shower, all of those things, by the way, I teach you in my coping with labor class. So particularly if you're trying to go without an epidural, you need a class on that, whether it's mine or somebody else's. Give yourself and your care team, whoever's gonna be there, some tools to help you cope at home. But really, if you're at home, then there are really no medication options for you. You could try a Tylenol, but honestly, it won't even touch your pain. I'm just gonna fly. I am flying. Flying away. Okay, Nicole Rowland. Okay, this is such a good one. She says, my epidural failed on the right side of my body. It was such a weird experience to feel everything on one side and nothing on the other. Does this happen often or am I weird? <laughs> you are not weird. This, I would say, is an abnormal response to an epidural. But really, guys, when they place the epidural and they're threading this little catheter in the epidural space, it is a blind procedure. They're not using an ultrasound machine. They're not like sending a little camera in there to see where the epidural space is it's all by touch and feel and when they thread the catheter in they ideally there's like this tiny little space they want to hit so they get in there and then it sits there and then like gives medication to your nerves right in that area but if they thread it in and they go a little bit too far and the catheter kind of turns one direction you may get all of the medication on one side of your body and not on the other side there are ways to fix that this is where you being in really close communication with your anesthesiologist really close communication with your nurse they're going to be able to help you to strategize with your epidural if it's more on one side a lot of times epidurals work by gravity so that just means flip to the other side so that whatever side is less numb you're laying on so the gravity kind of pulls some of that medication that way but if the catheter is truly or the little tubey thing is truly kind of turned one direction you are going to be numb on one side and not on the other good news is you know it's in the right place bad news is that it's only happening on one side so a lot of times they may be able to just kind of pull it back so instead of it turning this way they pull it back and it straightens out I don't know if you can see this you get the idea it'll be one side and then they pull it back and it straightens out and then it can flood both sides of the nerves I'm gonna do an entire breastfeeding coughing and questions maybe next month so if you have breastfeeding questions throw them in the comment box on this one and then May's coughing questions will be all about breastfeeding how about that's kind of fun, right? Let's go to the February coffee and questions. It's a coffee and questions style day. Jody C26 says, you talk about second babies coming faster. What if you had a C-section with the first due to failure to progress? Would this second baby come at the speed more like the first vaginal delivery? So this is a flex and flow answer. In general, if you have not pushed and delivered the baby out, you can imagine that your body is likely going to respond like it is your first baby for the length of time that labor is and how long it takes to push. Now, along those lines, RA says, if you are a second or third time mother, but it has been a long time since your last baby, like eight to 10 years, are you still more likely to have a faster labor and delivery or is it kind of like starting out as a first timer again? The answer is yes it's kind of like starting as a first timer again it may go a little bit faster especially as a nurse I expect you to go a little bit slower because it's been so long between deliveries and yes if you're attempting a VBAC I do find it's more like a first time birth I'm going to the next coffee and questions coffee and questions bonus Christy Hillier says do you have any tips to help her through labor at home before going to the hospital do with baby number two within the next nine days and I struggled with it last time yes take my coping with labor class guys this is why I spent probably 150 hours putting together this class for you guys even if you plan to have an epidural you still need to have tools to help you to cope at home so that you prevent yourself from having a c-section by going at the right time waiting at home laboring at home and then going once you're in active labor and then you can get your epidural if you want one take some sort of class so that you're not feeling so overwhelmed and so that you can like exhaust the whole list before you go to the hospital in fact I had a birth coaching mama and she said we're we're gonna go through and do all the things and once we've done all the things then we're gonna go to the hospital and that's exactly what they did and they showed up at the perfect time. Naturinda 
Brenda says, hey Sarah, thanks for the videos. They've been so informative. No, I, know. I have one question though. When opting for a natural birth, is it always guaranteed that you'll tear? The answer is no. It's not always guaranteed that you'll tear, no matter what type of birth that you have, minus like a C-section, you're not gonna tear down there. But if you have a vaginal birth with or without an epidural, both of them I would say are natural. I would just say medicated or unmedicated. The answer is no, it's not guaranteed that you'll tear. Keep that vagina intact. Let's actually talk about prodromal labor here for a second. So prodromal labor, this comes from Cassidy Rapier. Do you know anything about prodromal labor? I'm 40 weeks and six days with my second baby. My midwife swept my membranes for the second time last Thursday and I've been having contractions since then. They tend to start, go strong for a few hours and then they just stop totally normal. Prodromal or like prolonged early labor is where your body appears to be in labor and you're having super painful contractions that you're having to cope with, that you're having to breathe with, you're doing all the things for a really long time. For your sake of survival and not being so exhausted and having a happy birth memory, we don't want early labor to take, meaning from zero to six centimeters, to take like four days. We're literally, you're hawing through contractions for three days. In fact, I had a mama recently that did have this go on. It was two days of prodromal labor with no cervical change. If you're having those kind of contractions for a really long time, go home, relax, take a bath, drink a bunch of water, and lay down, rest, save your energy. Rule of thumb is if it kind of stays the same, you can assume that your cervix is probably staying the same. There should be a, an increase in the frequency and the intensity of the contraction. So if you are just not coping, request flex and flow if they do it for you, what we call a morphine rest. And what that is, is it is morphine, so it is narcotic. Because it's early in your labor, it is typically safe for your baby. They'll monitor the baby, make sure everything looks good first. But they give you this morphine injection. Usually it's subcutaneous, so it is a little shot, or it could be in your IV if you have one. Usually it's sub-Q. So they give you the morphine, and then they send you home. And normally the morphine, it's going to like knock out your contractions. It's gonna give your uterus a rest. It's gonna give you a rest. Thank God at this point, you can sleep. And then a lot of times, if it's truly labor, you'll wake up and you'll actually be in labor. Otherwise, it's gonna knock out your contractions and kind of like reset your body. Morphine rest can be super helpful when used appropriately. They're not for everybody, but they are an option that you can talk to your provider about. The other kind of tip I have for you, a lot of times what I find, and this comes from like the doula side, the more homeopathic side than the medical side, a lot of times when you're having contractions that are painful, your uterus is doing something, but your cervix isn't changing, you are holding tension somewhere that you're not able to just release. And so the goal would be for you in preparation, learn to release, even when you have discomforts of pregnancy right now, that you're able to, instead of go, ooh, ah, Oh, it hurts, let me tense up and like hold all this sorts of tension in my body. This is the worst thing you can do when you're in labor because your cervix does the same thing. And so if slash when the contractions come, you can say, my whole body is limp and loose. Those are great keywords for you partners. I'm surrendered to the contraction. I'm not gonna tense up my vagina. I'm not gonna squeeze my butt cheeks. Let everything loose, let it all flow, release your body, try not to tense up and that should hopefully help your cervix to dilate. That was a good one. We're gonna go over to Instagram and I put out a poll over there and then we'll just be done for today. I am not going to use this person's name. It's a little bit of a sensitive topic, but she says, would you talk about vaginal herpes in labor in your next coffee and questions video? Many thanks and hello from Europe. Hi Europe. Vaginal herpes, technically it's a sexually transmitted infection. There's herpes type one, there's herpes type two, and usually herpes type one is in your mouth. Usually herpes type two is in your like genital area, but really it can they can swap as you know because they're sexually transmitted. If you have herpes, herpes is a lifelong disease. Once you have the virus, the virus stays in your body forever. That doesn't mean that you're symptomatic or you have the herpes, what we call lesions, or like they're like little blisters forever. Usually the first outbreak is the worst. Now, you are more susceptible for herpes outbreak during pregnancy. So a lot of times during pregnancy, your doctor will put you on anti-herpes medication, valcyclovir usually, or acyclovir. So that's to prevent herpes lesions. Because if you don't have a lesion down there, then you can still deliver vaginally. But if you do have a lesion or an active sore, active wound down there in your vagina, when you go into labor, it does require a C-section because that open lesion is like imagine like all the little virus little guys can get all over baby and make baby super sick and like actually puts your baby at risk for death. 
Okay, we don't want your baby dying, so in order to prevent your baby from dying and getting super duper sick, it is a non-negotiable that you need a C-section if you do have a herpes lesion. Take your medications, you do the preventative care, you pay attention if there's any kind of tingles down there, or any kind of lesion. If you don't have a lesion down there, then you can still deliver vaginally, and it really shouldn't make a difference for your labor and birth. I like that question, because that's a super random one, and that's all what these coffee and questions are about. This is actually from YouTube. G says, hey there, your videos are great. How can you avoid a C-section if you are obese? For some reason, I associate C-section with obesity, but I don't know why. If you don't have gestational diabetes, is there a chance you can deliver vaginally? All of you ladies that are worried about your weight for pregnancy, you can still have a vaginal birth. Monitoring as a nurse is probably the biggest thing that I'm aware of if I have a mom come in that's obese. Just because with the extra adipose tissue, the extra layers of fat on your belly, it does make it a little bit harder for us to like get the baby on the monitor, but past that, especially if you don't have a complicated pregnancy, you are laboring, you can still deliver vaginally, and actually it is significantly safer, particularly for you, to avoid a C-section. So we want to work really hard to get you that vaginal birth you have a higher risk of complications of surgery so we don't want you having surgery we actually want you having a vaginal birth no reason to fear labor away Jolene Cap says is back labor mostly due to, to the position of the baby the quick answer is yes it's mostly due to the position of the baby it also has to do with your own nerve sensations like I know some women get menstrual cramps more in their back I am one of those people a lot of times earlier labor starts in the back and then moves forward just in general despite the position of the baby but most of the time it does have to do with the position of the baby hey I'm Amanda says I'm 32 weeks is it bad to sleep on my back sometimes it feels best the best case scenario is yes that you are sleeping on your side. Sleep on the side that feels best. Most of the time they're going to tell you to sleep on your left side just because that's going to give the best what we call perfusion to the placenta or the best blood flow to the placenta which we like. That's your baby's lifeline. The tree of life. If you really want to sleep on your back the concern is that the weight of your belly when you're on your back particularly flat on your back you have this enormous vessel tube of blood behind your belly called your inferior vena cava and so if you lay flat on your back the weight of your belly can push down on that blood flow and actually make you pass out and cut off circulation to your body. So we don't like that. That's being flat on your back. If you're really desperate to be on your back, just prop yourself up about 30 degrees. So that's with, you know, two, three, four pillows so that you're not totally flat, but that you're propped up a little bit and then you should be okay. But if you feel icky about it, then don't do it. And ultimately, I have to tell you, talk to your doctor about it before you do it. But in general, that's one way to go about that. Hey there, curl friend says, how does the sun side up position affect labor. So this has to do with the back labor type thing. Typically it's going to slow down labor, make labor last a little bit longer, and it may make labor a little bit more painful. So the goal is that you're changing positions super regularly and listening to your instincts to rock and roll that baby and get the baby flipped and turned, but you still can have a vaginal birth. SM West 88 says, is Tdap safe during pregnancy? Yes it is, and it is recommended. Rach. <laughs> says, if you tore with your first birth, are you more likely to tear with future births? This comes from my vaginal tearing video. So if you tore with your first birth, that is super common. Second, third, fourth time moms typically don't tear as frequently as first time moms. The skin is a little bit weaker on the area that you tore. Although if you tore versus like an episiotomy, the episiotomy doesn't grow quite as strong. So in theory, if you tore and then you were repaired, or even if you weren't repaired, then those tissues do grow back strong. Long winded answer to say that in general, second, third, fourth time moms don't tear as frequently as first time moms. That is all I have time for today. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for engaging. If you want more, I know I've mentioned a bunch of my classes. There's a lot of information that I still have not covered and it's gonna take me a really long time to cover. I have live online childbirth classes on my website. There's one coming up in July. I have online classes that you can watch today. There's a coping with labor class. I'm also teaching live classes in LA here. You can go to Childbirth Prep LA or just go to my website and it'll take you there. Lots of people say all the time that they wish that I could be their doula. I do virtual support for anyone, anywhere. This day and age, our phones are amazing. FaceTime is amazing. And I do support women all over the place. If you don't have access to a doula and you want to bring me along virtually, I do do that. So hit me up on my website, go over to Instagram, follow me over there. I'm doing Instagram lives all the time. I have other posts about other childbirth related things so you can get more and more educated, more and more confident, ready for your labor and birth. Keep watching, keep engaging. I so appreciate you guys so much. Until next Next time, don't forget to flex and flow, and I will see you very soon. Bye. Wow. I know. Perfect. Perfection. Flawless. I feel like you might make me more weird. Comments.
Okay. You want me to? I'm gonna leave. Ah! Okay, yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, I just get self conscious and now I'm sweating. A key. Likely, but likely they. they <laughs> Iman, Iman, I'm in. Emmanuel. Beolio. Love you, bye. Oh my goodness gracious. May I, my, I can't. Sorry, Brad, 